A major feature of test and teach is the value in reviewing the results as a group. We already showed how the user can compare his or her measurements with the creator. But and now this person has the opportunity to see how they compare with his or her peers. This is a way of judging the variability within a laboratory with how measurements are being made. In this video, we will demonstrate how Test and Teach evaluates measurements for accuracy compared with the creators and variability comparing measurements among the peers. We are now looking at the same long axis image that we saw previously in the other video. In this case, we're going to look at the results not only of what an individual did, but of all of the individuals. So we're going to go to what we want is the results. Now, we could look at the, in, if, if I wanted to look at my results, I can do that. And somebody can look at an individual result. Somebody else, this might be the, uh, the administrator of the laboratory who wants to see how a specific person did on this particular case. We're going to look at all of the cases, and what we're going to look for is summary. And in this particular case, it is number one. And here we're going to see the measurements. So there are, these are the four measurements that we took and the same four measurements that we did just in the previous video. But we're going to look at the measurement summary. Now it's looking at the results of all of the people who did this examination. And actually, this is quite a large number because this is a uh, this uh, case was in the uh, our laboratory. And, uh, many people were involved. In fact, it's over a hundred people were involved in making this this uh, particular uh, study. So we can get some idea as how much variability there might be. Now, this being such a very large number indicates that there's going to be a fair amount of variability. However, interesting, out of the 117 patients, there were only nine outliers, meaning that they measured, made a measurement that was outside the range of normal or abnormal. And that came with the uh, interventricular septum as well. So the accuracy was really quite good. Now the variability on the other hand uh, was not so good. Now, for example, if you look at the uh, user coefficient of uh, variance, that was 13% for the inferior vena uh, for the uh, interventricular septum. That's uh, unfortunately about average. Uh, we would like to have it below 10%, but the fact of the matter is, wall thickness measurements are not easy, and 13% is probably an average number. However, the posterior ventricular wall was uh, had a, a over 90% variance. Now that is totally unacceptable. There's got to be some kind of an explanation for it. Well, the explanation can come by clicking on, double clicking on the, uh, the measurement in question. And then we'll get a little bit more detailed uh, data. And we now can look at where these measurements are done. And woo, there we go. Some of the people actually did the long axis, um, they did the cavity, that because they were used to cascading. And so this highlights the fact that those measurements are obviously way off because they're the wrong measurement. Now we can actually correct for that, just to show you the versatility of the program. We really do want to know the variability of the posterior wall measurement, not these average of the outliers. So if we go to the values, and we can, now this will automatically put them in order of their value. And you can see here are the ones which are uh, obviously wrong. 
so because they were, they measured the wrong thing. So if we just highlight these and remove them, now they will recalculate, and there it is now 13% variance, just like the septum was. And considering the large number involved, that's pretty uh, decent. Now, when you look at this again, whenever you're analyzing the measurements here as a group, to refresh your memory, there's always the option of looking at the image again to make sure you remember exactly what this was looking like, because you might be looking at it some days uh, late between the time you examined or uh, did the, uh, the measurements and later. Uh, the other measurement uh, were really the, the cavity measurements were, were much uh, better, they were easier. The variability uh, of the uh, systole was uh, less than one, which is what we like. For some reason, there's a, a, the variability of the uh, <coughs> diastolic measurement is a bit high, and we'll have to see if we can explain that. Let's go and see where the measurements are done. And again, there, the variability is that not all of them went uh, at the base. Uh, <clears throat> the creator's measurement is in green. Uh, the ones which are in yellow, are, those are the measurements then in the same frame. Uh, the ones which are in orange are did it on a different frame. And some were uh, quite a distance from the base. And so that is an error. Uh, uh, they, they're not all measured in the same location. And in a given laboratory, uh, we have actually done uh, these kind of studies. And early on, when we first introduced this program, we saw other results like this. When they realized from this that they, we were expecting them to do it at the base, not at the mid-ventricle, we changed this and got all of the, uh, the, the sonographers and the physicians to measure all in the same location, and our variability improved dramatically. Looking at, uh, you can also analyze the uh, the data in in a by looking at it in in a systematic way to maybe just show the physicians the creators measurement, and then adding those which are on the correct. Uh, even though some of them were in the correct one, uh, frame, there you see how many were uh, in the mid-ventricle, and, and you get a, a considerable variation when you, when you do that. And then if you want to go back to see all of them, you can then see all of them. Again, the tools for analysis are uh, great. This is done in a, in a post-testing uh, environment. Uh, all of the sonographers, all of the readers, on, sometimes on both, will get together, and it's usually at an hour session, and we will uh, discuss and show these, and that's where the real learning comes through. And by the way, we do give, and I believe it's eligible for added CME credit when you not only do the examination, but also when you review it at the conference, as we're doing right now.